the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. Kindly be seated. And allow me to begin my topic this evening by reading the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 1 to 17. Then God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousand generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave and punish him who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you, you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then either by you or your son or daughter or your male or female slave or your beast or by the alien who lives with you. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth the sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother that you may have long life in the land which the Lord your God will give you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false, false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. Thus far is the reading. So the topic that I'm going to share with you this evening is Another topic, we have finished with the social doctrine of the church. Now we will begin this series of uh, lectures on the commandments. Uh, this evening, I will give an overall introduction to the meaning, notion, importance of the Ten Commandments. And that's why I did it on purpose that I started this sharing by reading the Book of Exodus chapter 20, because that's where Yahweh enumerated the Ten Commandments, and then he gave it to Moses. No, we have just we have one here who just come from Mount Sinai, and she was there in the place where uh, Moses received the commandments from Yahweh into tablets. And of course, Doctor also Anita was in Mount Sinai few months ago. So I think we have here many or several people who have been in that sacred place. Okay. Now, to be honest with you, uh, to talk about the commandments of God today is not a very popular discussion. And why am I saying that? Bakit sinasabi ko na speaking about the commandments in this day and age is not a good topic for discussion is because our civilization today 
Our culture is a culture that is characterized by people longing for their rights, longing for their freedom. And when people prefer to speak about their rights and about their freedoms, every time that they hear about the commandments, they usually associate the commandments with prohibitions. Ano ang mga ipinagbabawal? Now, when what you want is freedom and what you want is your right, and then there is someone telling you this is your obligation, this is what you need to do, the first reaction is, ayaw ko niyan. Kasi ang tao ngayon, they are more conscious of their rights and their freedoms, but they are not as conscious as regards their obligations and their duties, especially to God. That's why for the last 50 years or so, or even longer, there has been a constant effort to set aside the commandments of God. In many, many Christian countries, you go to Europe, you go to the United States of America, Europe and United States used to be, and probably even today to a certain extent, used to be Christian countries. It was Christianity that uh, inspired many of their practices, even, even their culture, and even their, their laws. But today, there has been, as I said, an increasing effort to uh, take away what is Christian in their laws, in their thinking, and even in their culture. For example, no? uh, for the last 50, 60 years, the idea that, you know what, it's now impossible to reconcile couples when they have their, when they have their differences because of this idea no, that there are irreconcilable differences the prohibition of not to commit divorce, adultery has been repelled. That's why today divorce is now a common law in all countries. There is now only one country wherein divorce is not allowed. And that's where we are standing now, no? the Philippines. The last one, the last two used to be the Philippines and Malta. Malta is, is now a, a country that allows divorce. Well, because of the idea you know, that, well, we cannot do anything, you know, when couples cannot reconcile their differences anymore, that's why the sixth and the ninth commandment have been set aside. You know? Another is uh, with regard to uh, birth control. Before, it was not allowed, even in the United States, even in America. But again, considering the difficulty of people telling them you know, to practice uh, temperance, you know, to practice purity, it's now counter-cultural if you have to speak against young people, you know, to practice modesty. And with the proliferation of pornography, proliferation of materials telling us that sex is now a form of entertainment. It used to be something sacred. Now it is something for sale and for personal pleasure. That's why the prohibition against contraception has also been repealed. Now, contraceptives is not only allowed, even promoted. Probably the same thing with drugs. Before drugs were not allowed, now there are even countries that allow recreational drugs. You know, like in Belgium, I think, in Amsterdam. If you go to Amsterdam, there are now uh, restaurants or uh, areas where you can buy marijuana as a form of recreation. You know? But of course, there should be a certain limit. So in other words, what we are seeing now is for the last 50, 60 years, Many of the laws of God have been slowly set aside, uh, 
neglected even before the even before in the 1940s 50s i remember my reading not that i happened to uh, live during that time but i saw in my father's uh, uh, my father's files there was one time when it was implemented in the philippines the blue sunday act where in every sunday no no commercial establishments uh, should be allowed to operate no? everybody should have time to go to mass to pray to be with their family the blue sunday act i think that was implemented during the last years of the american colonial period of course as i said for the last 50 60 years many of these laws you know, that we have mentioned have been either neglected repealed forgotten or even fought against now considering also what has what what has happened or what have been happening in our societies from the time when we started to kind of a neglect or uh, set aside the commandments of God what has happened or what have been happening to our societies well according to one US uh, finding according to the New York Times in the United States out of 10 marriages four will end in divorce that is 40 percent of marriages uh, in the United States, but actually we don't even have to go to the United States even here in our parish Many of our young people have single parents um, Of course even in your own parishes also It's not becoming uncommon. I'm sorry. It's now becoming common that you have families were in the father no is not there anymore or the mother or sometimes both it's the grandparents who take care of the children and also according to one study in every 10 pregnancies two or three might end in abortion and drug use is increasing in spite of the campaign of the government to uh, prevent or to minimize or eliminate illegal drug use for example a good thing also for us to consider is for example in the 1950s 60s not that i i happened to live during those years but during those years what were the basic normal day-to-day -day problems of students if you read the if you read for example the complaints of teachers in the 1950s 60s their common complaints were students were very noisy. They were cutting classes. They were not following the dress code. Or they they throw they would they would throw their trash anywhere. Now compare what are the problems of students today? Drug abuse, drinking teenage pregnancy, rape, robbery, physical assault, and sometimes mass shooting in schools. What I'm saying is, since the beginning of this worldwide effort to set aside the laws of God, what has been happening to our societies? Well, we are not making any progress. In fact, we are getting worse. Well, many people who don't believe in God think that we have to be progressive. We have to eliminate God because God has no place anymore in contemporary society. We have to be freed even from God you know, who keep on demanding from us what we can or cannot do. So in this uh, effort of many people to set aside the commandments of God, what has happened is we did not make any progress at all. In fact, what we are experiencing now is social deterioration. There is a deterioration of morality. There is a de deterioration of 
human behavior. In fact, what we see is really worse than what we had before.